Hello, today for review I've got the second part of uh, topping new 30 Pro stack. It's a digital to analog converter uh, D30 Pro. Pretty interesting device both in terms of specs and uh, in other uh, uh, features. It uses four uh, Cyrus Logic uh, 43198 uh, digital to analog converter chips and uh, it's uh, well, it's not totally unusual, but less mainstream nowadays. Uh, previously, almost everyone uh, wanted to create devices with uh, AK digital tonal converters, then we, are, uh, we ran out of AK chips, so uh, Saber was most obvious choice for many, but Topping decided to go with Cyrus Logic and actually Cyrus Logic is a pretty good uh, chips, especially in the player's area, Real few really good models were built with this chip, so desktop uh, digital tonal converter look uh, promising too. Uh, price is fairly balanced, uh, it costs $400, I will add links to the Lin Soul shop in the description, so with the amplifier you can get it for $700, if I remember the price of amplifier right, because my memory is not that good. It supports high resolution, DSD, all that stuff, of course it's balanced, and actually Topping decided not to pay for MQA, and probably it's a good idea to save few dollars here too. Anyway, enough talks, let's have a closer look. Package is simple, minimalistic, white cardboard. On the side there is a sticker saying that it's uh, D30 Pro Silver. Also there is a black version, but uh, I've got a silver one. Too many black devices. So, and same as it was with amplifier, uh, box is much bigger than device inside actually. So, in perfect form package you will get USB cable, power cable, remote control, actually nice touch from topping side to include it, and digital tonal converter itself. So as you can see accessory set includes everything what you need. In terms of design it's good, maybe it's nothing uh, super fancy, but it looks uh, stylish and pretty reliable. It has the same size as amplifier, so they will create a perfect stack that will decorate your desktop uh, somewhere near your computer pretty nicely, or of course you can fit it somewhere near your TV or in your me media rack somewhere there. So remote control is present and you can use it for additional comfort. On the front side there is a display, actually it's not a traditional uh, display, it's segmented indicator, but it's uh, pretty ok in usage. And the volume knob, here used encoder, it clicks nicely and rotates correctly and also it's clickable, but I will talk about the controls a bit later. On the bottom side there are silicon feeds and thanks to normal weight it stands reliably. So really good in terms of holding the, its place. On the rear side there is power in and on off button. It's a full power off but it also has a standby mode. USB in, optical in and coaxial in, so basically all three inputs are here. and. Uh, Speaking about a bit uh, forward, so almost equal uh, audio quality from all three digital inputs. And outputs single-ended with two RCAs and double XLR, so all necessary connections are here and are present. So let's plug the power cord and flip the switch. Actually you can probably see or not. Hopefully you will see small red dot, meaning that it's in the standby mode. We turn it on and it connects, USB is blinking and it shows minus 30 decibels. So let me remove the protective film as a sign that I won't sell this digital tonal converter after the review. And maybe it will add some brightness. So. You can see that uh, it's not blinking in real life, but of course uh, because of uh, shutter effect it can 
show some blinking. Pressing the button toggles switches and rotating the knob changes the volume. So waste majority of settings is done via the remote control. So this button go sends it to sleep, mute with separate indicator, input selector, volume toggle, middle button done nothing if I remember right, line out select the output so you can select uh, which one to use and it's pretty convenient if you uh, connect two different uh, uh, loads to two outputs. You can connect for example headphones output and some active speakers and uh, toggle it. Also headphones button doesn't do anything. This one changes field filters if I remember right uh, and memory also done nothing. Actually you can select the brightness of uh, screen. I don't know why third is brighter and fourth is dimmer so different modes and auto button will uh, activate auto standby mode when there is no signal it will go to the standby. So remote control is also working nicely and does its job. And as you can see, it display is not uh, some fancy TFT screen, but uh, this LED indicator does its job pretty well and in terms of controls and connectivity and other stuff, it's a pretty good device. Forgot to mention one thing, if you want to change some settings without the remote control like digital filter or something else, you need to power it off, then press its, the, uh, this uh, knob and then power it on and it will boot up in the menu. So you can toggle the, uh, you can press the knob and then rotate switch to change uh, light, uh, uh, auto shutdown and all other stuff. So not the most convenient and logical way. Usually companies adding something like that for the long press of this knob uh, moving you to menu. But uh, they decided to uh, uh, to uh, set the standby mode for the long press. So not super convenient but actually allows to do that but uh, it's better to use remote here. And of course about the sound. When my wife saw what what's happening on my table, she called me nuts and I am partially agree with her. Because you know, there is not much sense in building this setup in real uh, for the video purposes. I spend uh, time testing them together and separately. But anyway, I decided to make it to show you that it's all working in a pretty complicated way. So. It's uh, D30 Pro and A30 Pro, they are connected with uh, good DIY XLR cables. As headphones, I'm always using VAY, VA1, uh, custom DIY planars from Kiev. And as a, tra as a transport, we will use Fios M15 connected to the only adapter I currently have with me. And actually, here is USB audio player pro. You can see that device is attached, it's connected and actually it plays sound. So I did, uh, uh, I did the job of building this setup so you can be sure that it's working. Uh, unfortunately, this adapter isn't very good with M15, it's losing contact from time to time, so it can disconnect during this video. But I'm using M15 just to show some examples of tracks, so I don't think it's critical for the video purposes. Anyway, let's go back. If you remember my review for the A30, if you don't remember, you can go back and uh, revise it uh, and uh, uh, in that review I said that uh, A30 is a, adding a bit of uh, fun coloration, adding uh, some slight accents to sound more engaging and, and at the same time it's pretty uh, natural and resolving and technical. 
And for D30, Topping decided to go a logical way and they made it uh, neutral, transparent, uh, uncolored. So, you know, uh, there is not much sense in reviewing uh, D30 Pro itself. It's just technical, it's just natural and resolving. So, in this review, I will mostly focus on the sound of this uh, stack because I don't know exact percent but i think waste majority of uh, buyers will get them all together and actually i think they look lovely on the table so you can see that while i was trying to rise m15 it was disconnected and connected back anyway so i will disconnect it so in order not to continue this suffer I already demonstrated you that it's working in general. So, uh, digital tonal converter itself is natural with good deep bass, nice resolution, absolutely uncolored, no attempts to add some accents, no attempts to add some weight, but at the same time amplifier does that a little bit, it's adding a, a tiny hint of weight and uh, also, it's highlighting a bit that small nuances and overtones of low frequencies making acoustic instruments sound even better than they are in real life. And in general, it gives you nice, lively, engaging bass without big coloration, without oversaturation, with nice, good control, even with planar magnetic headphones with some gear that is tough to drive. So, this uh, stack definitely will nail almost anything. With, of course, a few exceptions of uh, really tough to drive headphones. Bass is lively, with good textures, with good amount of nuances. And as an example for the low frequencies, it's uh, Pain of Salvation, Chain Sling, nice, good acoustic record, acoustic version of their famous track, with a really nice engaging bass that sounds absolutely natural here in this stack and in this setup. Mid frequencies are also on the natural side with slightly boosted dynamics. I'm speaking about the stack now. So with slightly boosted dynamics, highlighted a bit tiny bit highlighted emotions. So I won't uh, repeat anymore that all the coloration is small. So not much sense in doing that over and over again. So uh, let's go back and. Uh, Imaginary stage is above average, pretty big, with good uh, depth layering, with good instrument separation. It's not super critical for the quality of records, but at the same time good records are required here. It won't highlight issues, but problems it will show as is without any attempts to smooth something or like that. I really like uh, male vocals with it in this uh, stack because it's adding uh, more velvet, more full-bodied sound. And female vocals also sound really good, but male vocals having a bit of additional charm. And female just sound as is, so not big issue, of course, because it still sounds really natural. And as an example for mid frequencies, I've got uh, Sigurd Rongvaldsson. I I really need to practice pronouncing these names, or I need to absolutely say it absolutely like no one will notice my uh, mistakes if i will say dark forest something like that okay so jokes aside i really like this project uh, nice in uh, approach to music really experimental avant-garde with a lot of uh, small nuances and details and this uh, stack delivers it good and that uh, slight boost uh, of emotions that it shows sometime really fits this music but digital tonal converter itself is just natural, uncolored, technical, without any attempts to change anything. You know, it's uh, really like uh, uh, simple to describe the sound of digital tonal converter itself. It's natural, but not absolutely monitoring with proper weight and something like that. Not too focused on the micro contrast, but with good resolution. That's it, period. <laughs> and uh, treble, also nice with uh, basic layering but nice overtone saturation proper attacks and decays uh, nice extension not the maximum but uh, really good and it's controlled well not uh, pushed forward not uh, lean back so just stays on its place 
sounding uh, really nicely. And uh, as an example, I've got Layla Martel, dance floor, great female vocal. Uh, and you know, I really wanted that Layla create some new albums in this genre, but uh, her new albums are more experimental with more departure from, from classical jazzy vocals. But uh, Dance Floor is nice and uh, sa same title track uh, sounds engaging and the uh, properly recorded vocal has a lot of overtones that goes to the treble area and this uh, stack delivers that nicely. Um, you know, maybe my review seems really brief, but it's not much to talk about uh, here actually because digital tonal converter itself is natural and uh, Amplifier I already described it and together they just sound like amplifier digital analog converter just give this amplifier Something to amplify without coloration from itself and in general it sounds the way this amplifier delivers it and Overall it gives a nice good setup that can compete uh, Could be a good competitor with $1,000 digital tonal converters like for example my Yulong uh, DA10 that I'm using, it's, uh, they are about on the same level, while Yulong being a bit uh, less fun in coloration, this one a bit more fun in terms of emotions and other stuff, but other difference is absolutely the same, so I think it's a really good option, and not much sense in uh, talking about the load and all that other stuff, I already told in the amplifier review that it's really good and universal, it can drive uh, power-hungry full-size planars and at the same time it's uh, pretty okay with sensitive in-air monitors too and uh, speaking about the compressions, I just don't have anything to compare with this stack anymore, so you long and that's it. I have Winshine digital tonal converter but it's a step higher and uh, speaking about uh, digital tonal converters purely. I recently reviewed Gustard X16. Of course, I did try it with uh, topping A30 Pro. There was a slight uh, difference. Gustard has a bit more extended treble and a bit uh, tighter low frequencies, but that difference is definitely not a huge, so uh, it's just a matter of additional features. And of course, Gustard is a bit better anyway, so it's maybe does it cost that additional price or not? It depends on what you need. In general, uh, D30 Pro is pretty good digital tonal converter that delivers a lot of value itself and in this stack they uh, sound really great. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a nice day.